Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have my live stream completed in which I went through and I assembled this entire electrical circuit which operates completely on AC. And this is to give somebody a basic fundamentals on multimeter usage. It also allows us to test out other things like polarity plugs, GFCI testers, and non-contact pens. Let me take our, uh, down a run through of everything that we got going on. Uh, it is currently plugged in. This is the disconnector, which I can lock out if I really want to. We turned it on. This switch right here, although it's not labeled, if it goes this way, you are turning on your isolation transformer, which comes up here and powers this outlet. And when it's on this one, it's actually powering off regular mains, regular GFCI. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on to this. It's, it's meant to duplicate a more common electrical system that you would see uh, someplace else, like your house or maybe even in a hospital or medical facility. It's, it's actually kind of laid out in a very linear way. I should label it like one, two, three, et cetera, but it allows me uh, to do a lot of things. For one, inside this doohiggy right here, we have a couple six amp fuses, these ones. I can take a blown fuse and I can pop it out and I get to stick it in there and I can invoke bugs. So one of the things that all people should know is when you test out uh, AC systems or if your power isn't turned on on your equipment, you always check your source, right? And checking your source would naturally come over here. Luckily on each and every one of these, there are screw down lugs, which are very accessible and they're, and they're actually recessed. So you can't touch it with your finger. However, you can touch it with a probe. Very useful for troubleshooting, but energize it. So in a normal configuration, your uh, three-way switch is gonna be in the off position, which is the middle and there's plus bars around. So on a normal AC system, everything is referenced off of ground. So technically you can leave one lead right there and you can use one hand to probe around. It should work fine until you activate this guy, this contactor closes, energizes the isolation transformer, and now we are operating on isolated power, which of course is not gonna be off a of ground reference. So it's going to show some extreme anomalies. Although I do have some anomalies here and I've got to do some current checks. I've done continuity checks to ground and I don't have anything. However, when you see my transformer uh, and it's reference to ground, I'm getting 114 volts. Now, just because you have voltage doesn't mean you have current. And that is usually one of the freaky things that you get when you're working around isolation. I'm going to do a current check to make sure that none of the pins have current to ground because it should be a true isolation transformer. There should be no path to ground. But it does have 114 volts of possible voltage. And on the neutral pin, I'm getting 11.82 volts AC. Hmm, very curious. So some of the cool stuff that we can do is we can come over and we can probe our mains. So when we probe our mains, I'm getting 118 volts on hot. I am getting 2.7 volts when referenced to ground. And when I'm ground to ground, I get zero volts. Of course, we can do other things like I can open up ground. I can open up neutral and we can actually see how hot flows around the circuit by opening up various uh, contact points. One of the other cool things that we can do is we can test down here and I can invoke bugs on your contact. Now, why is it something energizing? Well, I specifically chose 115 volt contacts because that allows you to test without moving your multimeter around, 115.9 volts. And you can actually see a little indicator that it is energizing. See, kind of cool. Um, I do have a regular GFCI. So we can plug in a GFCI tester. I do have correct polarity when it comes to uh, the wiring. However, when I test the GFCI, it pops as it should. So we can also 
teach people how to test GFCIs and why it pops in the first place. We want to reconfigure the system. All we got to do is kill the main power. I can lock it out. Then I can turn on some other bugs and re-energize it. And now we have a whole new configuration. The goal to this whole entire setup is just to get people comfortable and used to using multimeter probes. So first, people are going to have to start with AC. I have this kind of designed for how you would see it in a real institution. We have a master disconnect. We have breakers. We have ground bus bars, just like you would see in a breaker panel. From there, we do have some activation switches, which you're going to see in a lot of a lot of closets and a lot of sterilizer areas. You're going to see mains disconnectors, and we're going to do uh, a lot of relay troubleshooting with these relays. Kind of cool. Here's one added bonus to this entire setup, and that is these guys right here. See, I've got these little exposed conductors, and those are secondaries on that transformer. So since they're secondaries, we can measure voltage and explain to people what secondaries are. And yes, they are exposed, but they are isolated. So technically, you can put your finger right on that bad boy and you'll be absolutely fine. One of my secondaries is 26 volts. One of my secondaries is gonna be 35 to 36 volts. So now all you gotta do is create a uh, troubleshooting guide so that I can walk people through this entire setup. We should be able to test everything from isolated power systems. We can test breaker panels. We can test fuses. We can test GFCIs. We can test isolated outlets. We can test everything. The next project I'm gonna do is going to be um, an exploded view of a regular medical device. And it's going to include its power supply, its IEC, all that should be right in there so that you can troubleshoot to your heart's content. And that's going to be one of my next projects. I'll probably maybe do that tomorrow. But uh, the first step is to get the AC side down. And I think it's pretty good. Anyway, guys, hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and stay tuned because we're going to be taking these boards here into real classroom environments in the future. We're going to be teaching people direct hands-on experience on how to use a multimeter. The goal is to teach them a skill and empower them by giving them a tool. So they'll now have a skill and a tool to proceed with for the rest of their life. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching.